Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Jenny Falmer coming to you on behalf of the Congregational UCC in Shenandoah and First Congregational UCC in Red Oak. Greetings here from Southwest Iowa. We are so glad that you came to join us as we gather together and apart to worship God. It is a beautiful weekend here in Iowa, a beautiful opportunity for us to worship the creator of the universe. In a moment, we're going to have our uh, prelude, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. I pray that as you listen to and see the words of the song that you feel called into worship. But first, let's pray as we begin this time together. God, we invite you into our homes, into our computers, phones, and ask that in these next moments as we seek your presence, that you meet with us. Speak to us. Let your love be known in our lives. Amen. Amen. Let's hear our prelude. Amen. Thank you, Carol Lee. Today's scripture comes from the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament. And if you didn't know this, Jeremiah was a prophet, not just a bullfrog. Jeremiah was a prophet appointed by God to speak the truth of God to the nation of Israel, to the kings of Israel. He began with Josiah and stayed on. Sometimes his words were welcomed with open arms. Sometimes the prophets had words that were not so happy to be heard. 
So let's hear from Jeremiah chapter 31, some good news. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. This is good news indeed. That God seeks us out. God has a future for us that is a relationship. Why was this prophecy given from Jeremiah to the nation of Israel so long ago? Well, it's because nothing new happens under the sun, right? We follow the story of the nation of Israel uh, through all of the Old Testament and we follow Jesus and over and over and over again, people are drawn to God and then other voices draw them away from God. And most often, uh, people who were being faithful to God are distracted by other voices when there are things to fear, when fear is their driving motivation. The nation of Israel was faithful to God when Moses called them into new covenant, uh, but it only took a few weeks of him being up on the mountain for them to begin to doubt where God was leading them to doubt whether Moses was coming back. They were unsure of their future. They were not quite formed as a nation. And it only took a few weeks before other strong voices, other wisdoms of the world began to speak to them. And before you know it, they're worshiping a golden calf because that was the answer to their problems. This is a pattern all through the Bible. The New Testament church was following Jesus, was creating this new thing, and amazing things were happening. Community was building in seemingly impossible ways. But every time that Paul had to write something to them, it was because people were acting out of fear. Fear of prosecution, persecution. Fear of judgment from their neighbors. Fear of all the new. And so that New Testament church had arguments over who can eat what? Who can hang out with who? And at time and time again, Paul says there is freedom in Christ. God gives us this hopeful future that no longer are we reliant on other people to tell us how to know God, but that God gives us each a unique opportunity, a connection to heaven that we may have a personal relationship with the creator of the universe. That God's law may be in our minds and God's truth may be in our hearts. And this is really good news, right? This ends saying, I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. It is good news because God is calling us into relationship and with that relationship comes forgiveness and truth and hope and a future. But it's also really inconvenient because it would be a lot easier if God just gave us like a clear manual on how exactly everyone should act and think and dress and be and everyone was exactly the same. This thing where God speaks to all of us uniquely, where we all have our own relationship with God is really inconvenient because we're all so different, right? As a part of the United Church of Christ, we are this great big um, experiment where all these different kinds of churches are united together. We started in the 50s from three different denominations, and we have everything from the most liberal to the most conservative church, and they're called into covenant with one another. And it is beautiful, and it is really inconvenient. 
because it would be easier if all the churches in our denomination were just the same. Then we wouldn't have to think about words. We wouldn't have to consider other people's points of view. We could all just be the same. And that's our struggle today, right? We are given this freedom, this called into this intimate relationship with God. And we have this common truth, the gospel. We have a common creed, we often say. Uh, but the ways that God expresses God's self are as unique as each one of us. And so this unique and inconvenient calling is sometimes really easy just to ignore. Especially when we are living in a season of fear. We're coming out of a year of fear. Many of us are facing uncertain futures. We see the world changing around us and miss, you know, familiarity. And most of all, we today live in a culture that is so politicized and so polarized that you have to pick a team and that team is going to tell you what to think about everything. They're going to give you the words to speak, the way of seeing the world. And we use these teams as the primary lens through which we see the world and we see ourselves and our faith. I thought for the sermon that I would do like a fun little activity where I took like some kind of lighthearted national story and I was going to go on Fox News and on MSNBC and just see how differently they report on it. But the heartbreak, heart, heartbreaking truth of it was that I went on both websites and they are so different that I couldn't find a common story without it being some big heavy thing. And we live in a society where fear feeds our need to have a common enemy. Fear feeds our tendency to listen to whatever floating heads are being paid to just share opinions online, share opinions on social media, share opinions on 24 hour news stations. And we find comfort in it. We find comfort in knowing I'm a part of a team. And so here's where I belong. And here is my common enemy. And I can, when I'm feeling uncertain or afraid, I can turn on this news station and find someone who will tell me what I want to hear. And they will tell me that I belong and that I'm on the right side. And they will tell me how to think about this. And now I don't have to think. I can just say what I know to be the truth. This is our culture. And I don't think it's new because it was happening in the New Testament. It was happening in the Old Testament. And we have a God who very generously gives us freedom from this. Who very out of abundant love calls us to let go of all these views and to first see their world through the lens of heaven. No longer will they speak to their neighbor, know the Lord, because if we are depending on someone to tell us how to know the Lord, they're going to tell us exactly who to be, how to act, where to be, and what to think. No, we are called into a faith where each of us has access to heaven. Each of us has access to the word of God and we are called to seek God out individually. And that is freeing because as long as we have the lens of heaven driving the way that we interact with the world, then that truth of God can cut through all the lies, can cut through all of the opinions, can cut through the culture wars. And we are free from all the anger of the world. But it's also really inconvenient because when I'm afraid, I don't always want the truth of heaven. When I'm afraid, I want someone to say, Jenny, you are right. You are on my team. Those people are to blame. And Jenny, here's what we think about it. Why? Because that's easier. 
It's comforting. It lets me know that even though I am afraid, I'm right. And then the Holy Spirit comes in and keeps humanizing the other. And the Holy Spirit keeps speaking to my heart and my mind. And all these inconvenient truths wipe away the things that I wanted to self-soothe me when I was afraid. Friends, are you afraid? What are the voices that dominate your life? And are you brave enough to replace them with a relationship with God and with the truth of heaven? No, we don't have to get rid of politics. No, we don't have to get rid of news stories that we like or stations. But we are called to let heaven be the truth through which we consume everything else. And God is calling you to that freedom. God is calling me to that very inconvenient freedom. Will we hear this new covenant and say yes? God, first we ask for your forgiveness for the moments when fear has made us less than who you are calling us to be. Help us to be people who are driven by your truth, your love, your compassion, by the story of the gospel, that you love the world so much that you came to us that we all may be known, loved, and forgiven. Give us the courage to let go of all the things that self-soothe us, but also give us the courage to stand against the culture that wants us to find an enemy. Give us the courage to be free in you. Amen. Amen. We're going to hear now a beautiful song from the choir, and it's calling us into relationship with God, the presence of the Lord, and it's combined with one of my favorite prayers, be still and know that I am God. Let's hear from the choir. <laughs> Thank you. 
Friends, I'm so glad that you came to join me today. I pray as you go into this week that you are blessed with eternal hope that comes from relationship with God, that you're blessed with hope for your future, my future, our future. And most of all, I pray you are simply blessed. We'll see you again next week.